So, in this video, I'm gonna answer a very common question I get. Reyes, do you have any beginner videos on how to start screen printing at home? Reyes, do you know of any starter kits I could get that will help me get into screen printing? Well, homie, you're in luck. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you by far the best beginner video to start screen printing at home and the best screen printer starter kit to start screen printing at home. Hope you enjoy and hope you learn something. Okay, so this is the first video I watched when I first started. This is the first kit I bought from Ryonet, which is screenprinting.com. They're not paying me for this advertisement. They should though. I actually hit them up before to become one of my sponsors. They said no, but it's cool. It's all right, it's all right. I only cried for a little bit. Anyways though, so $250. And um, I'm going to show you how it works. This is the one I bought. Now this, this, this comes with a water-based thing. So this is just to get you started in the game. Of course, hopefully you upgrade to Plastisoline. And get a heat press like how I, how I cure my shirts. So get a flash dryer, you know. Get started with this, see how you like it, and grow from here, all right? Look at him. You know how he got, you know how he started his business? He was in a rock band, and they needed shirts. So he started making his own shirts, and soon realized that other rock bands wanted to make their own shirts too. So he started teaching them, and that's how it started. If you gotta watch, if you wanna watch this whole video, it is three hours and 21 minutes long. I'm gonna link in the bottom in the description below. But I'm just gonna go through it real quickly, all right? You know, so, and also I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to get started. You don't have to get a one color. Like me, myself, I got a four color one station. I made a video on how to assemble it. And hey, you can check it out right here, all right? You see how he has the light set up right here? You see how he has the light right there? Me, I had it a little bit different. But the same thing, 16 inches away from the screen. What he's doing is uh, degreasing, which taking up the little dust. I don't use degreaser, I use soap, specifically dish soap. And that's, that's what I use, works great. He used degreaser, hey, to you your own bro. You said tomato, I said red fruit. It's the same thing. The mesh on the screen that you want is 110. 156. I have I have links to screens where I get them for about twenty dollars a piece in the description below. All right. What that means is the higher the mesh count, the more detailed stuff you can do. But 156 works great. What he's doing with this is he's mixing the emotion. You get the bucket of emotion right there. You also get a little thing of, of solvent that you have to mix in with water. Mix it real well. Mix it in that activates the emotion. So you have to uh, you have to stir it, make sure it's all the same color, and just let it sit for two hours to get rid of all the air bubbles. There, that's, that's called a scooper right there. There you go, look. Now he's putting the emotion on the screen. If there's still a few bubbles, that's all right, as long as it's not full of bubbles. There you go. See, now what he's gonna do, is gonna put the emotion on it, tilt it, put pressure on it, against the screen and go but I coat one side, flip it, coat the other side. You see how he elevated the screen so their air circulation could hit the bottom and top so they could dry properly and evenly. You wanna do this in a light sensitive room. What I do is I pull a cover on my windows and that's how I let it dry. And then the next thing you gotta do is you, you gotta make your design. So you need to know you need to know how to make designs or if someone can make your design. Like I use CorelDRAW S4. I made a design like this. I color it all black. Print, I take it to my local print and copy shop and they print it for me in the transparency. See, so now he's gonna put it in the palette. He's gonna put some tape on it on the bottom side. But see, he aligned the design first in the palette. And then he's gonna tape it and then there you go, and then he's, watch. Now see how he's in a light sensitive room? And now he's gonna bring the screen down. 
see now the transparency is stuck on the screen with tape. See? So he's putting a lot of tape so the design doesn't move. Because if the design moves while it's burning, you ruin that whole screen, homie. And what I like to do is I get a piece of glass and I put it on top of the screen to make sure the transparency doesn't move. But of course, whatever works for you. The exposure time, homie, you're gonna have a hard time. We all did. Because his exposure time might be different than mine. Because you gotta take into consideration how humid your area is. You gotta think about how bright your light is. You gotta think about how much emotion you put. My time is 16 inches away from the screen for five minutes. If the whole screen is washing out, you need to raise time. If you're having a hard time washing out anything, you need to decrease time. The perfect time is when you could easily wash out the design and the screen doesn't mess up. We all messed up, homie, right? Don't cry about it when you mess up because we all messed up. But you'll learn. See, if you gotta put a lot of pressure on your design for it to wash out, you need to decrease time. And then once you're done with that, just let it dry, homie. And now he's just gonna put tape around the edges so the paint doesn't go through the screen. You could use any type of masking tape, right? See, now he attached the screen to the press. And there you go, he's all set, homie. And there's something called off contact. Meaning, you need a little bit of space between the screen and the palette. That way when you get the shirt, one eighth of an inch. A tip I did, a quarter is about one eighth of an inch. So what I would do is I would tape a quarter, I would tape a quarter under the screen. So when it hit the palette, it was one, one eighth inch. You know, you just need a little bit of space for it. Because when you squeegee, you want the screen to pop up, not sit on the shirt. See, just a little bit, just a little bit like that. Just a little tiny bit. All right, and then what he's putting, he's putting adhesive on the palette so when you put the shirt, it doesn't lift up with the screen when you're done screen printing. See, now he's putting the shirt, he put the adhesive on it, so now to make sure it doesn't move or lift up. See, with water based thing, you have to leave the screen flooded. Meaning, you see how he has ink on the screen? That way it doesn't dry up. See how he has to keep it flooded? You don't gotta do that with plaster soling. So he's drying it. I don't advise doing that. But hey, everybody their own. He's just drying it. He's not curing it. Drying it is just drying it. Curing it is making it permanent on the shirt. That's the difference. You can also use a heat gun. Now he's gonna put another coat. You know, cause the first one wasn't that white. So that's why you gotta dry in between. You know, what, the thing about water base is that uh, it feels good on the shirt, but it doesn't last that long on the shirt. That, so you just know that, that it is gonna fade over time. Well, plastic sole is gonna last longer. It does feel thicker on the shirt, but it does last longer. But, you need a professional way of drying it with a conveyor dryer, or like I do, a, a heat press. And of course, I got links to those in the description below. And then you just gotta practice, it's all practice, homie. See, see, and now he's, he's curing it with a heat gun this time. The best way to test it, if it works, do it, go wash it, and now you know. But this is a starter kit, right? Just to get started on something. This is a learning, you need to learn first. This is a great teacher. One good thing about water base is that you can clean it with water. Plastiso, you need plastiso remover to uh, clean it. So water base is easier to work with, that's why it's a great teacher. But plastiso is gonna last longer, but a little harder to deal with. Now, I don't wanna make, I don't, uh, look, my bad. I don't wanna make it sound like with water base, you're gonna wash it once and it's, everything's gonna come off. No, it's gonna fade over time. So 
So just know that. Start with water base, the simple stuff. See how you like it, and then grow from there. The next thing, all right, so let's just say you're done with the screen, you could reuse screens. He spray some emotion remover, scrubbed it, and he's gonna rinse it off, watch. And just let you know, to clean off a screen real good, you need pressure. I use a power washer. Before I had my own power washer, I went to the car wash to clean off my screen. And then that's it, and then you could reuse it all over again. Repeat the process. Now, you're still gonna see a little bit of the design like you could right there, but it's fine, man. They call that a ghost design. And of course, they have chemicals to remove the ghost design, but hey, bro, you know what I mean? One thing I know is about the shirt business, they try charging you for everything. So, you know, they're gonna give you another, another chemical to remove the ghost, when it's not necessary. Of course, get it if you want to get it, homie. But like the degreaser, you don't need degreaser. Just use some dish soap. But of course, they're not gonna tell you that because you know why? The money. They want the money. But you already know me. I give you nothing but that free 99 knowledge. And that's it. I mean, that's it. That's screen printing right there. Of course, I just went over the main stuff. You're gonna encounter a lot of little problems. But just know, all of those problems have solutions. And the good thing, the shirt community is so helpful. When I encounter a problem, the first place I go is t-shirtforum.com. Link in the description below, right there. I mean, years and years of questions and knowledge right there. So go right there, they have a lot of answers. And that's it. And once you're done with that, you know, get some practice, make some designs, then upgrade to a four color so you can start doing two colors and more. Upgrade to plastic soul ink, get yourself a heat press, and now you'll be making great quality shirts. And that's it. Hopefully, this helped you out in any way. You know, a lot of people ask me if I could make a video on how to start screen printing for beginners. Well, this is the one I saw, and this is the one I recommend. So if you want to see the whole thing, link in the description below. And if you guys want to get this kit, there you go, link in the description below, $250. I know it's a lot, but hey, it's gonna get you started the right way. And once again, Ryonet is not sponsoring this video. I'm not getting a commission, no affiliate links, no discount code. But just because I want to share that free 99 knowledge, I tell you, homie. Wait, hopefully this video helped you out, gave you a better idea on how to screen print. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button to let me know that you actually like this video, you learned something, and more videos coming up. One of the videos I'm gonna make soon is uh, how to get custom designs made on Fiverr.com. You know, hey, comment below what you get your designs. Cause I know a lot of people can't make their own designs and I'm gonna go find the easiest and the cheapest way to make your own designs so you can start screen printing. So make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Hey, and if you're an entrepreneur, you like what I'm doing, yo, make sure to go get an entrepreneur shirt. Link in the description below. I'll see you in my next video.